Good morning, folks. Where else to start but our new eye in the sky? Iris' first images have gone public, and we can already tell she's better than the SDO. Can't wait for more. Time for a drought look. Remember, folks, all these pages can be found at drought.gov. This is tough to notice, but the total exceptional and extreme drought in the southwest has actually been mitigated a bit. Unfortunately, it might be a bit too late for the Elephant Butte Reservoir. Something exciting from our Van Allen probes in a slide right out of the Electric Universe PowerPoint, acceleration of high energy particles with the genesis inside the Van Allen belts. This is part of our electrical interaction with the Sun and interplanetary space, and it's a great read. Makes me think of the plasma torus around a Z-pinch, doesn't it, Dr. Thornhill? Also linked is Caltech, affirming strong evidence of water oceans previously existing on Mars, and a groundbreaking study, my top recommendation for today, the most detailed study of what we're doing to the honeybee population to date. And if I know my subs, you're not going to be happy. A 6.2 in Vanuatu won't make many headlines, but it is of small-scale significance with New Zealand just south owning the second largest rumble of the last 24 hours. Here's Dorian coming off the coast of Africa, headed right for the meeting place of the Caribbean and the Gulf, but unfortunately the models are not in agreement thereafter. She is pulled towards the Pacific, but could catch a ride north at any moment if she drifts to too high latitude. Then we come south of Mexico, where this time it appears Hawaii is dead set in the path of this storm. We'll update this every day, but Islanders need to take heed and prep this weekend for early next week's impact. Revisiting the drought in New Zealand, if you remember it's breaking records, now officially the worst in 70 years. Meanwhile, the rain wants to stay south of there, next cell staying a bit south in Tassie territory. Folks, it's that same low in the northeast Atlantic causing flash flooding in Dublin, Ireland, fantastic lightning displays up and down the convergence line, and a deadly heat wave out in front where the wind draws north from Africa to meet the low. The U.S. wind map reveals a convergence line right in the center, lines of warm, moist southern air coming up to meet cooler dryness from the north, which must equalize their pressure, temperature, moisture, and electric potential, all right above your head tonight. Latest official sunspot numbers, red is predicted. We were predicted to be pretty low, but have gone lower, following one of the longest and lowest solar minimums on record. Furthermore, the sunspots we do have appear to lack magnetic complexity requisite for larger flaring, and the few that do have that complexity refuse to flare at Earth. Eruptions favor the backside and the east and western limbs for nearly two years now. This is described in my video, The Next Ice Age, and the Energy from Space series, and will be a featured discussion topic in the Fly on the Wall premium audio cast on the website. Speaking of flares, nada, except for small sea flares. The southern active region is the only complex one at the moment. Central umbral development has essentially cut off the leading positive blue umbra. This thing could be fun to watch more for round today on an intensity gram or the gong H-alpha. We had awaited a coronal hole stream impact from that dark one facing Earth four days ago. Her speedy solar wind stream bunched up solar particles last night ahead of it as seen as a density increase in orange. Afterwards, this morning, you see the speed ramping as density falls. That's a perfect coronal hole signature confirmed with the three-day SOHO solar wind telemetry. It took a good shot at our shield, ruined the nice curve of the electron flux, but has not succeeded in producing a magnetic storm. Our shields are holding very well. Umbral field stayed closed, but you can see the green up top as the next coronal hole is coming into play. In 211 angstroms, the SDO reveals this as the dark intruder from the top left corner. We now have two Earth-Sun connections jumping towards Earth with eight connectivity points remaining, still turning around the back side with the primary connection as well. Shots of our star to close, including a terrific coronal cavity. Later today, please expect a full description of all premium content that will soon be available on the website. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.